Greetings everyone. In this video, we'll see the ways of DMA transfer. DMA stands for a direct memory access. This video is brought to you by Group 7 of Division C from Department of Engineering, Sciences and Humanities from Vishwakarma Institute of Technology, Pune. Now that we have seen the full form of DMA, let's understand its definition. On this page here, you can see a simple sketch connecting the memory and DMA controller. Now what is DMA? DMA is a process which enables data transfer between the memory and the input output device without the need of or you can say without the involvement of CPU during the data transfer. It's a feature of computer system that allows certain hardware subsystems to access main system memory independently of the central processing unit that is the CPU. You see without DMA when the CPU is using programmed input output it is typically fully occupied for the entire duration of the read or the write operation and thus unable to perform other work or it's unavailable to perform other work. Now let's see the history of DMA. DMA was invented by Gary Kildall, an American computer scientist in early 1970s. He was one of the founders of Digital Research INC, a company which developed the first DMA controller called the DMA controller chip 8 through 37, which was used in IBM PC80 in 1984. Hello guys, now I am going to tell you about the principles of DMA bus master. It is a first party of DMA system. In this, the CPU and other devices can be granted control of memory bus. In this, the bus master is the peripheral who writes system memory directly without any involvement of the CPU. It also providing memory addresses and control signals as per required. Here are the three modes of DMA transfer. First is bus mode, second is cycle stalling mode and third is transparent mode. So now let's focus on the bus mode. In this mode, before the CPU takes control of the buses back from the DMAC, all the bus data is transferred. In this mode, the huge amount of data is being transferred in one single time duration. So it is a quick set mode of DMA. Hence, it also saves time through transfer data through this way. The pros of the mode is that it is the fastest mode of the DMA transfer. And the cons of the mode is it is not user friendly when the DMA transfer CPU will be blocked. Hello everyone, myself Ishwar. Now in the previous slide, my friend Atharva has explained you about the burst mode in DMA transfer. Now in this slide, we will move to the next type that is cycle stealing mode. Okay, so we know that there are some input output devices which are relatively slow in operation and those input output devices are taking time or you can say taking longer time for data preparation. So it is much obvious that when the data will be prepared then only it can be transferred. So till the time there is requirement to prepare the data, the buses are being already released from the DMA controller. These buses are with CPU and once the data is prepared, the control of these buses is being given to the DMA controller. That particular mode is the cycle stealing mode. Means once the data is ready, then one cycle for one particular cycle controller system possesses giving to the DMA controller so that prepared amount of data can be transferred and when data is getting ready, till that particular time control of buses is with the CPU only. Since here it requires longer time for data to get ready. Means as compared to burst mode, this mode is slow but efficient. Now talking about the pros of the cycle stealing mode, then as I already mentioned, cycle stealing mode is the most efficient way for DMA transfer. Talking about the cons, then the rate of DMA transfer will be less as the process is a bit slow. And the next con is that CPU is blocked for the entire time in cycle stealing mode. Okay, so this is what cycle stealing mode is. Hello, let's see what is transparent mode in DMA. Transparent mode refers to a DMA transfer operation in which the DMA controller 
access the memory without the involvement of the CPU or the operating system. The transparent mode in DMA is sometimes also called bus mastering mode. Whenever CPU does not require the system buses, their only control of buses will be given to DMA. In this mode, CPU will not be blocked due to DMA at all. This is the slowest mode of DMA transfer. Since DMA has to wait right before so long time to just even get the access of the system buses from the CPU itself. In transparent mode, the DMA controller can read or write data to memory without any intervention from the CPU or the operating system as long as the correct memory address and data size are specified, hence due to which less amount of data will be transferred. At the same time, transparent mode has some pros and cons. First of all, we will see pros. Uh, it ha- in, a- in this process, CPU will not be blocked at all. Its uh, add is cause this. Uh, sl- it has slowest DMA transfer rate. That's all. So I am here to explain you about advantages of DMA. DMA allows for faster data transfer between peripherals and memory as the CPU is not involved in the transfer process. DMA offloads the CPU from the task of data transfer allowing it to perform other tasks. DMA allows peripherals to transfer data in background without interrupting the CPU which can increase responsiveness. Transparent mode of DMA allows the CPU to access peripheral access without the need for the programming input output instructions which can simplify programming thank you now we will discuss the disadvantages of dma dma requires additional hardware such as dma controller which can increase the complexity of the system dma requires additional hardware which can increase the cost of the system dma can only transfer the data within the limits of the system memory which can limits the size of the data that can be transferred. It is used maliciously to gain the unauthorized access to the memory and thus can create the security vulnerabilities. In this way, we will conclude our PPT. Thank you so much.